Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jimmy Two Tech channel where you know we do a little bit of everything. Today we are excited to introduce you guys to the Uniwix X100 Defender battery. This is a deep cycle battery from Uniwix. There's a startup company out of Southern California that reached out to us. We've been interested in lithium batteries for a while. We wanted to get a couple for our RV and also one for our boat to run all the lights and radios and things on that. So when they reached out to us, we were excited to check it out. Now this one is in the budget category. It is a 12, uh, 1280 watt hour, 100 amp hour battery. So it's equivalent to a lot of the other ones, uh, whether it gets its, holds its capacity or not, we're gonna find that out later because we are gonna test it. Um, this is in the $499 price range, which is fairly decent for these kind of batteries as long as it does what it says it's gonna do. Um, it's not the cheapest, but it definitely is not in that upper class of some of those bigger name ones that you're, you know and love. But uh, we're gonna give this one a test to make sure it fits in where it should be. Um, what makes this one different over a lot of the other ones is it has a 10 year warranty, which is double what some of the other ones give you, like three to five years. So 10 year warranty is pretty good. So they must feel good and stand behind their products. We're gonna hope that's the case. Also, this has a cold, was it cold temperature shut off um, to protect the battery. That's something a lot of the budget friendly batteries doesn't have either. So. Um, if, whether that works or not, I'm not sure. I can test that, but I'm sure we'll get a hold of this and tear it apart and do all those tests. So we'll wait for his video. He's the one you want to see when you're looking at this. He does everything with these, but check him out. Link down below, <laughs> right? Um, let me give you a little stats on this. Like I said, it does have the cold temperature charge protection on here. It has a short circuit protection, automatic cell balancing, high and low voltage protection, high and low temp protection and 250 amp surge for about 10 seconds. Um, it has the nice plastic case, of course, lightweight like most of these are, which is one of the appealing factors on these. It has nice hardware for these top posts. They just screw right in, which is nice. It, co it comes with those for you in a little bag. You gotta like that. Um, one, thing we, one thing with these a lot of people ask is, can you charge these with a regular battery charger? You can in some instances, not always the case. You can charge it with a regular lead acid battery charger, as long as it charges between 14.2 and 14.6 volts. And you wanna also make sure it doesn't have auto equalization mode enabled and make sure you have the ability to shut it off because you could damage the battery. You don't want that when you spend this kind of money on a battery. Uh, it's better to go with a dedicated lithium iron phosphate battery charger. There are many of them out there. You have the Victron IP65 Blue, you have the NOCO, and you also have a bunch of, you know, no brand ones that probably get what you pay for. And on a battery like this, you might not want to go too cheap on it. So what we decided to do, we went with the, the Victron. It is a little more expensive than some of them, but it, this one is Bluetooth, which is nice because now we can monitor everything right from our phone. Uh, we can do the setup. You get to select what battery you got, select your profile. And this has a dedicated profile algorithm set up for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Waterproof connections, or water resistant, right? Uh, good size cables good clamps, so that's gonna be nice. Before we do the uh, capacity test on this battery, we're gonna charge it up first. Uh, we're gonna read the voltage and see what it came. It just We just took it out of the box, so we'll see what the voltage is here in a minute. And then we're going to hook up this charger, give it a full charge, and then we're gonna do our capacity test. We just picked up one of these, one of these capacity testers on Amazon. I'll leave links down below if you guys are interested in doing some of that yourself. This will just put a load on the battery and it's gonna run over like probably 10 hours and it'll tell us if we get the capacity we're supposed to get. So we're gonna do that also. This is also capable of 4S and 4P configuration. So you can set up in series or parallel if you need uh, a bank of these, uh, like our RV takes two, our boat, well, we'll have two on the boat, but this one's gonna be dedicated for the house battery. But uh, these are, it's, it's a game changer really, because you get so much more out of them and they're so much more lighter. So everybody's trying to save the weight, even on the boat, we're trying to save the weight. So that's what we're using our for. ours for. This one is on the boat. We're gonna use it to test. We're gonna run it right down. Just this, you know, how long can we run the lights on the boat? How long can we run the radio? Cause we have, we have floodlights, spotlights, we have radios, LED lights, uh, wash down pumps, all kinds of stuff on the boat. So we can use this and we'll see how long we get out of that. I mean, we might even get a couple days with what, what we would be doing. So. That'd be a, maybe a future video. We'll show you what, what this battery does and how long we get it with it on the boat. But uh, 
With all that being said, let's get this. I will check it out, see what our volt, current voltage is coming out of the box, and then we will hook up our our Victron IP65 Blue charger, get this topped off, and then we're gonna do our capacity test. So let's check it out. All right, we're doing our initial voltage check here. This is the way it came out of the box. Let's see what we got. We have 13.18 volts, not too bad, but we are gonna to top it off so our test is accurate and we'll do that complete test, so. All right, guys, as you can see, our battery is fully charged. It's in the storage mode. That's what's cool about this uh, charger. You can monitor this on your phone. This is the voltage of the battery, 14.12 volts. Awesome. No current going to it. It's in storage mode, which will keep it where it's supposed to be. So let's get this disconnected, and we'll hook up the tool that checks the capacity. Uh, and then uh, we'll see how much capacity this thing has. Make sure it has what it's rated at. All right, guys, now we're out here doing the test. We made a couple leads with some 12 gauge wire and then uh, we put some terminal lines on it. They are the positive and the negative on the battery. And over here, we hooked it up to the positive and negative on this tester. One thing you wanna do is make sure your fine and coarse adjusting screws are all the way counterclockwise when you start this. And then you hook your power cord in to the top here. There'll be like three, on this tester there's three different ones, you'll get confused. This one over here is an out. Oop, get you in frame. This one over here is an out, this is an in, this is an in. But you want this top one. So now we're gonna plug it in. When you first plug it in, it will be in Chinese. Hope you guys can see that. You're just gonna wanna press it to kick it to English right, right there. And then that's one of the screens that'll show you the volts, capacity, and all that stuff. Uh, this one is the one I kinda like. Um, it looks pretty good there. So you can see it's 13.8 volts. No amps right now. What we Pretty much what this is, is a, it's like a heater that's going to draw current. So we're going to see what the capacity is on this. We're going to just do this at like 10 amps. So let's turn this up. We want to try to get it up to 10 amps. We're a little higher than that. Let's fine tune that. Hope you guys can see that. I'm adjusting just to fine tune it. Get it to around 10 amps. There we go. It's got a 10 amp draw, 10.1. And you can see it's counting the watt hours. And this is the total time of the test, the amp hours, and how many watts. We're pulling 134.9, 135 watts. So we're gonna let this test run for a while. We'll come out every now and then and test it and see if we're getting the capacity we need out of this battery. So stay tuned. Okay guys, we are about two hours into our test and we're doing pretty good. We got 251 watt hours and about 19.32 amp hours currently. Still 12.9 volts. So doing good. All right guys, we are four hours and 38 minutes into the test. You can see we're still at 12.8, 12.9, and still pulling 10 amps, 130 watts. Uh, and we are four, what are we at? 46.85 amp hours and 607.75 watt hours. So we're still on par, it's looking pretty good. We'll see it in a couple hours and see where we're at. All right, it's getting dark out here, but hopefully you guys can see that. We are 8 hours and 43 minutes in. We're at 88.07 amp hours. 1,134.95 uh, watt hours. Still chugging along 12.6 volts. So next time you see this, it'll complete its test. We'll make sure we're reaching the numbers we're supposed to. Well, there you have it, guys. It's like 2 in the morning here, but you can see 10 hours and 33 minutes. We got 106.64 amp hours, 1361.71 watt hours. So it definitely met its capacity and exceeded it, in fact. So it must have some pretty good cells in this thing. So that's awesome. Well, there you have it, guys. The test results speak for themselves. We definitely got the stated capacity out of this. As you've seen from our test results, we got 106.64 amp hours at 1361.71 watt hours. So that exceeded what it is stated to do. 
I didn't really have a way to test the cold weather, you know, the cold weather temperature charge protection. But uh, maybe in a future video, I'll be doing other videos on this for sure. Um, I'll leave links down below for uh, the test results too. And if you guys are interested in one of these, you can head on over to their website and pick one up. I'll leave links down below to that. Um, I want to thank uh, Unix for reaching out, send me the battery for review, and uh, so far impressed. The case, the case is a nice case, good lightweight, has a rated capacity. The 10-year warranty is is a game changer also, and not to mention if the, the cold uh, temperature charge protection, that's something good that you don't find in uh, these budget batteries. So definitely a way to go. Um, if you guys liked or found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up, give us a like there, let us know down below in the comment section. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. We get back to all of them. If we don't know the answer, we will find it for you uh, if you're unable to. Uh, and also don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell notification because we got lots more videos coming up on this battery here. And hopefully we can get our hands on another one or so and we can set up in the RV. Because this one here is going on the boat, but we'd love to set one up in the RV and do that switch over from uh, the regular lead acid. we got to change the charge thing in the uh, RV, plus put two of these in. Uh, that would be a nice change for an RV. Uh, hopefully new RVs start coming out with them. That would, that would be nice. But for now, everybody's left to converting it over themselves. Like I said, you want to head over to their website. It'll give you a lot more information on this, especially all the technical stuff um, that some people might be into. For now, we're going to get this one charged up. We're going to put it in the boat and run it through its paces, put it through a lot more tests. I have another test coming up with one of the compressor fridges and this battery, see how long we can get out of that. That would be nice, hooked up to an inverter. So stay tuned for those. Remember that bell notification lets you know when we post those videos. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. And don't forget to try something new.